Uh, hello, everybody, once again. Uh, my name is Ekaterina Sinsova, and I am representing HSC International Admissions Office, Moscow campus. And this is our sixth and last webinar as a part of HSC UCA International School Media Communications and Development in Modern World. And today we prepared for you a very special lecture from our HSC campus in St. Petersburg. And our meeting today is dedicated to digital transformation of communication in arts and culture. And we will be talking about new trends in consumer patterns, new communication strategies, channels, instruments in arts and culture. And we have our speakers, experts today, Yulia Trapskaya, Associate Professor at the School of Economics and Management. And she is also academic supervisor of two master's programs, arts and culture management and cultural and event tourism management. And our second speaker, Alexey Gargadze, postgraduate student and lecturer uh, at the same school. And uh, after lecture, we will have Q&A session. Let's ask your questions in the chat. And I'm giving the floor to our speakers. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So, uh, dear all, uh, we are happy to be here and introduce our lecture on digital transformation of arts and culture. And uh, as you understand, we are from arts and culture management. So, um, our master program is closely connected both with arts and culture and with digital culture. Of course, we uh, focus very much on this digital transformation uh, because it is very clear that it's impossible to ignore such important trends in life and development of art and culture industry. So uh, let's start our lecture and the agenda for today. We're going to start with digital transformation in general and uh, its impact. Uh, then uh, we are planning to move to arts and culture industries themselves and uh, talking a little bit about stakeholders and the arts and culture ecosystem. It's important, vital to understand how this uh, phenomenon uh, organized and what is the structure of arts and culture industries. Uh, then uh, we quickly move to digital in arts and culture and um, um, the most important trend. And then uh, we are going to go deep into digital research and digital instruments. The last part is uh, very important and my colleague Alexei is going to present it and uh, talk uh, about research and about instruments. Uh, so uh, let me start with uh, the general trans observation. Uh, so uh, we can say that uh, we are all find ourselves in the framework of new society and new trends. And it means that all we connected very closely today and the milestones here are digital technologies, which make it possible to build very uh, close connection very fast. And uh, one more important uh, trend today is work 2.0. It means that uh, the content is mainly generated by users and user-generated content, uh, content um, is a subject of uh, management and subject of the research. The third important trend you may see here is the speed of uh, technology diffusion. So you can compare, for example, the electricity, uh, the speed of electricity diffusion is uh, 36 years. And please compare it with uh, social network diffusion, which is only five years. So the speed, uh, the nature of uh, connection, the nature of uh, content and subject of uh, 
uh, who generate this contract, everything is changed during the ever changing uh, last decade, maybe. And uh, now we move to arts and culture sector. As you know, uh, traditionally, um, uh, we can include here arts, uh, theaters, museum, media, films, literature, performing arts, architecture, uh, maybe creative spaces, and of course, everything uh, which is connected with cultural heritage. But uh, according to new trends, a uh, wide circle of companies can be included in the art and culture sector. And many researchers and practitioners consider creative industries and the looks uh, segment, and many, many other industries uh, that are standing far from arts from the first view, that they are now uh, becoming a part of arts. And we can name this trend as artification, the artification process of many, many industries. It's very important because it helps us to understand uh, the circle of stakeholders of arts and culture industry. So a few words about the certification uh, process, which is vital in modern uh, society. So the certification is mainly some trend when non-art becomes art. And here you can see a few cases of that. Uh, maybe the most uh, uh, famous case is Chupa Chups, which was uh, designed by Salvador Dali. So it means that uh, art comes to very non-artistic uh, field and becoming art. The same we can talk about uh, BMW, about Cartier, about uh, H&M, etc., etc. So it's mainly about collaboration between non-art and art. It's mainly about art, which becomes part of non-art uh, industry. So, uh, all in all, we can talk about very wide range of stakeholders, which are um, considered to be part of art and culture industry today. And uh, uh, what is uh, important here is uh, one more thing, is ecosystem approach. And uh, culture and art uh, has its own big ecosystem, which consists of few ecosystem pillars, starting with networks of different stakeholders inside this ecosystem, and I should underline that uh, uh, networking is very important in artistic field, as you understand, maybe the most uh, valuable phenomenon in it. The second thing is leadership, which is uh, as well vital in this field, because leadership uh, role play is uh, built very strong trends in arts and culture industry. Uh, the next pillars of art and culture ecosystem is financing, which is uh, partly uh, comes from uh, state, but partly comes from private sector. And uh, from country to country, it's very different approach to financing. Uh, you know that partly, maybe mostly countries support that art sector should be funded by state but it's not a very universal approach. And in some countries, uh, art industries considered to be very independent and funding themselves uh, by fundraising, crowdfunding, or even commercializing uh, the arts um, objects. Uh, the next is talent. Uh, we continue to talk about pillars of entrepreneurial ecosystem, so talent, uh, of course, one of the most important resources uh, for arts and culture ecosystem. And of course, uh, the brand, the image, the nature of uh, art and culture depends on talent quite uh, much. The next thing is knowledge and support services 
Um, and um, I would like to say that support services are very important. Uh, for example, they can help uh, art people to become entrepreneurs, or they can help to build collaborations, or they can support in building kind of new profession to um, enter new markets with uh, different art objects. So uh, support services uh, play quite a vital role for arts and culture ecosystem. Uh, the next, uh, what we can um, talk about is formal institutions. And of course, arts and culture, um, as I have already mentioned, it can be funded by state or be very independent, but anyway, uh, it somehow depends on the state. Because it deals with cultural heritage, it deals a lot with uh, legal environment. That is why formal institutions is kind of context of existence of arts and culture industry. Uh, then we can talk about culture itself, about physical infrastructure, and of course about uh, demand and market. Very different art market and demand for art in very different countries. Uh, so uh, here we um, made kind of brief overview of our context art and culture, uh, art and culture ecosystem, and we can move forward and talk about uh, more than challenges and trends. And uh, we can talk about uh, our current situation. Of course, uh, we consider the COVID a kind of crisis. And we think that its uh, phenomenon uh, has both negative and positive uh, sides of this medal. And we can look at it as um, kind of cross point and uh, as a uh, mean to revise strategy, to revise the view on arts and culture industry. So you know that mostly arts institutions uh, now uh, are under pressure of this new um, uh, trends and they push to be very digital, very interactive and to go online. Uh, but uh, is it negative or positive? It is difficult to say. Anyway, we can say that maybe more than uh, 10 or even 15 years ago, this trend uh, was started. Uh, people tend to consume even art services online. And many museums uh, try to make kind of um, digital reflection of the museum or of part of their collection. And they try to communicate with the uh, auditory with uh, different online instruments. So it means that uh, from the one side, uh, we should be concentrated partly on online activities of art institutions. And on the other hand, uh, we should research uh, these online activities and use new digital instruments for such kind of research and uh, we try to track this uh, digital behavior and digital patterns of uh, consumers for example using uh, user generated content or something else but now i give a word to my colleague alexey and he's going to talk about uh, digital research and um, digital instruments of research. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, so if we are talking about uh, some different uh, methods, uh, we can uh, compare uh, these methods, uh, modern methods with uh, um, more traditional methods. So, and uh, research so before the digital area, uh, for this uh, uh, period, we studied different uh, um, aspects using some 
uh, questionnaires, interviews, uh, focus groups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these uh, methods has a lot of limitations. Um, first of all, time limitation, finance limitation, and um, the accuracy very often de uh, depends on the quality of uh, uh, the data, yes, uh, which was collected, and uh, um, the degree of um, uh, completeness, as well as maybe the quality of uh, uh, some uh, staff, I mean, interviewers, uh, you should control all of them. And so, in fact, this is very difficult uh, work. Uh, today, uh, as uh, um, Professor Trapska have already uh, noted, today uh, we can see new type of um, um, uh, websites. Uh, these websites are um, called like web uh, uh, 2.0. Uh, it means that uh, people generate, generate the, uh, the content by themselves. It means that uh, some social networking sites like Facebook, Instagram, or all contacts here, they are so big, not because of uh, uh, big uh, staff yes, of uh, these organizations, but because of uh, our activity, our user uh, activities. And um, people or customers also have already left their footprint about some different aspects um, of their lives on uh, um, some forums uh, as uh, comments or reviews or uh, maybe liking is also digital footprint so uh, if we analyze your likes we can uh, predict your interests etc uh, and what can digital footprint tell tell you or us yes um, we can um, explore different uh, aspects from uh, uh, preferences uh, and emotions to uh, transport uh, loading. There are very, I think, uh, interesting uh, and uh, important uh, articles in health studies, which predict, in, in which uh, uh, authors shows us that we can predict uh, some diseases uh, based on um, uh, maybe tweets in Twitter. So it is, of course, this study was on a country level, but or a state level, sorry. This study was made in the USA and the observation was the state in the United States. So, but, but in fact, we can predict so specific indicators. And of course we can, maybe predict social demographic, demographic characteristics and the behavior of our customers. <clears throat> Talking about the culture and uh, tourism, uh, there are different uh, sources of uh, um, digital footprint of such data. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> of course, we can collect uh, uh, maybe uh, the information from our competitors. Uh, from uh, the websites of different tour agencies, uh, websites of organizations, of museums, of uh, galleries, etc. So um, this information is very useful for your maybe um, for the strategies of uh, in marketing, uh, for the strategies of uh, creating com uh, communication strategy with your audience. Uh, another source is aggregators, and uh, this is also uh, very interesting uh, platforms so, which can uh, help you to find main trends. Yeah, because uh, um, people leave a lot of reviews, and you can uh, study uh, the satisfaction of uh, uh, some visits of museums or some sites in uh, different cities. And uh, what is more, you can compare um, some results on international level. So this example, TripAdvisor, Airbnb, Expedia. So uh, as, as we know, there are international platforms and you can compare, for example, um, um, 
results in St. Petersburg with Milan or with uh, Chicago, etc. So it, it is, it doesn't, uh, it, it not, it not depends on uh, uh, the location and uh, you can uh, collect uh, this data from your hometown without some moving in uh, different cities. Uh, we can also use some search platforms and Google, Yandex, uh, these two, I think the most uh, uh, popular platforms, uh, they have um, very interesting uh, uh, tool, uh, tools inside these platforms uh, where you can uh, uh, study some uh, people's search. So how we, how we search different uh, um, Meets yes, different uh, maybe places which we would like to um, uh, to visit and etc. So these platforms uh, aggregate this data and shows you, I think, very um, um, very quality, quality quality data. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, this data is very um, useful in um, in different uh, research areas. And of course, social networking sites, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and contacts, uh, as well as Facebook and etc. So these uh, uh, webs, uh, websites, social networking sites, or SNS, so they um, uh, they aggregate so a big amount of data, and you can use this data. Uh, in um, in this sphere, yes, because I think uh, um, in, in ethical aspects, yeah, uh, some spheres uh, are very um, uh, so. So you, you should be very accurate using the data. For example, in political science, uh, there are some examples when it is so dangerous situa situations. Uh, Maybe if we are talking about uh, some elections uh, in USA or in some other countries, so in such studies, so you should be very accurate. But if we are talking about the culture and tourism, I think uh, this uh, um, ethical aspect is not so uh, terrible, and we can use this uh, data and predict some uh, needs of our um, customers. Um, the process of um, analyzing the data uh, divides on uh, three steps, main three steps. First of all, of course, we should uh, uh, collect all the data. And there are different uh, ways. You can use uh, some interface uh, uh, soft, like uh, maybe, you know, data miner or any other platforms, real platforms, which you, you need just to click some buttons and collect some um, information. But uh, these, uh, um, uh, these tools, uh, those tools are very, uh, they have a lot of limitations. So in, uh, dif in different um, studies and questions, uh, you need to collect specific data. And in, in these uh, um, cases, you need to, for example, write uh, some, some codes in uh, Python or R, if you know these programming languages, or maybe Java, C++, etc. So, and you can collect this data using such uh, um, scripts. So after collecting, you should uh, uh, clean the data and this uh, step maybe <coughs> uh, you, you, you should spend um, more time on this step because you should uh, clean a lot of spam, yeah, internet uh, data are characterized uh, as, um, as data with a lot of waste, yeah, I mean data waste. So you should uh, delete a lot of spam, a lot of uh, um, and not necessary information, extra um, uh, spaces, uh, um, you should uh, uh, tokenize your diet data. It means that you should divide your data to minimum segments, so boards or characters, to analyze them. And then you can analyze using, uh, for example, um, predictive models, uh, uh, machine learning or topic modeling tools, 
and then we visualize the data. So this is maybe three main steps uh, for uh, working with uh, digital footprint. And now I'd like to show you several um, studies. Some of these studies uh, uh, were created by our team. Uh, some examples I just uh, get from uh, scientific articles, but I, I, I wrote the links of sources, so you can also uh, find these articles in Scopus or Web of Science. So this uh, study was uh, made uh, by, by me in uh, some, some years ago, so uh, we collected uh, uh, digital footprint of uh, a long night of museums from Instagram. And here you can see uh, the mapping of uh, uh, these uh, data. So it, most of the posts in Instagram uh, have uh, the geotext. It means that we can um, connect this post with the geographical location. And after this, uh, oh, sorry, this mapping, we can um, maybe rank some uh, um, organizations or some uh, places, maybe on the city level uh, or on the organization level, etc., district level, and we can um, see what what are the most popular uh, cities or places. Yeah. Or we can also create uh, uh, tourist uh, roads based on the real people's uh, um, uh, moving from one museum to another. And we can understand that these museums um, uh, have uh, the same uh, audience. Yeah, And we can maybe create a thematic tour for these uh, museums. And also we can study the dynamic of activity. And um, I hope that most of you know this event, uh, a long night uh, uh, of museums. In Russian, it, it is Noch uh, Museum. So, and uh, this is international uh, festival. And uh, uh, if we uh, analyze the dynamic, you can see that the peak of the activity in digital sphere is uh, at uh, 19 o'clock in the evening. So maybe the night of museums is not the night of museums, it's the evening of museums, yeah? um, if we analyze the main trends. Um, we also um, collected uh, the data from BK. Um, you can see the number of posts uh, which were generated uh, by users and uh, the groups, the groups uh, uh, of different museums and you can see that um, there is an increase, you can see that an increase of the number of user uh, generated content uh, before 2017 and then decreased. And the um, big increase of group generated content. It means that maybe um, the a long night of museums concept or idea was changed and now uh, this is more uh, com commercial um, festival than uh, maybe um, uh, social, which was uh, created by users. Yeah, it's just a hypothesis, but you can see the differences uh, uh, of um, different years. Uh, you can also uh, study the uh, topics of uh, um, these years, and uh, we, we collected uh, all the posts of, of people from um, these uh, from these three years, and using some uh, measurements and measures. Uh, for example, in this uh, study, I use log likelihood measure to compare these uh, uh, years. We can understand what uh, um, words are more significant. Not um, these words are not uh, most frequent, but most significant uh, for this um, year. So, and you can uh, see that in 90, oh, sorry, 2017, the most uh, um, typical uh, topic was ecology. Uh, then it was uh, 
maybe something uh, uh, about the topic of uh, football because there was uh, um, international um, event of uh, football. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Cup. Yeah, I, 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 football I, yeah, football cup. But I don't, I don't remember the full name of uh, uh, this event. So it was in Russia, and of course. Uh, Mm, some museums uh, uh, used this uh, uh, topic in their uh, programs. And uh, in 2019, um, the main topic was a periodic table of Mendeley. Um, it was the concept of uh, the organizers, uh, which was, uh, I think, clearly demonstrate this graphic. So, um, this uh, data can be analyzed in different methods and the most I think useful and the most popular today is and you can find a lot of um, articles and uh, um, conferences uh, um, based on these uh, two uh, methods of analysis so social network analysis and text mining. Uh, first uh, method uh, is so um, interdisciplinary, and you can find uh, this method in different spheres from um, management and uh, sociology to literature and uh, biology. Yeah. Um, here you can see just uh, some examples of this graph. Yeah, um, you can see the uh, hierarchical graphics of. Uh, um, uh, organizations, yes, the typical organizations. But if you study not formal um, a network of these organizations, not formal, I mean the communication network, how people communicate in the real world, uh, you can find that the most uh, influential, influenceable um, positions or uh, broker positions um, have. Uh, uh, middle management uh, um, uh, staff, yes. So it, it, it's not maybe a trivial um, result because uh, in, in our imagination, maybe we can uh, imagine that um, the, the top management or the uh, CEO is the most uh, um, um, important uh, person in the organization. However, if we, for example, delete, yes, some uh, middle management uh, people, yeah, uh, we can destroy uh, the organizational um, process. So the organization or factory maybe um, couldn't uh, uh, work without these uh, uh, people. We stop this working. Um, uh, we can, uh, there are different, uh, maybe funny studies, and one of these funny studies uh, illustrates how, um, how did the PayPal mafia uh, acquire Silicon Valley. So if we analyze uh, the uh, CEOs and uh, um, board of uh, uh, directors uh, in uh, uh, organization in Sil Silicon Valley, we can uh, find that most of these members are from PayPal. So uh, in, two, in 2012, uh, PayPal was, uh, eBay uh, uh, bought PayPal for uh, one and a half billion of dollars. And uh, all the um, members of PayPal, they start new uh, startups. Yeah, and maybe you, you know some of these people. So I think that Elon Musk is the most uh, famous people for, from this group. And uh, he, he was also from uh, PayPal. And uh, this study shows very, um, I, I think very accurate and very uh, visible um, um, how people from one very success team uh, uh, create a new um, new uh, startups and create the dynamic of uh, uh, in, in, 
of evaluation maybe of uh, in some uh, spheres uh, in Silicon Valley. So it shows just uh, how PayPal uh, influence is uh, significant uh, for today. Um, we can also um, study our audience using this uh, uh, social networking, uh, social network analysis. Uh, I'm sorry for Russian language. This, this was from uh, one of our study, and uh, this is uh, a picture. So that's why we couldn't translate them. But how I, uh, these uh, words, uh, these uh, these words are the names of different uh, cultural organizations in uh, Saint Petersburg and Moscow, and um, the links uh, shows the uh, in, in the number of shared uh, participants in the social uh, uh, networks like. Contact them, and you can compare maybe your audience with uh, your uh, competitors, for example. Um, and it is very important to, to understand how you you should communicate with the different um, uh, customers as well as uh, uh, competitors or your partners. Yeah, uh, maybe you can find your uh, your partner using uh, such networks. Uh, we can also use social network analysis for semantic analysis. Uh, for example, uh, this study, um, in this study, we collected all the um, transcriptions uh, of um, speakers in Russian Interactive Week in 2016. Um, we collected these uh, tr transcripts of speech and then um, using some methods of text mining, we um, unite words uh, if they used in uh, the same context. So, and we and when we unite these words, we can uh, we, we can get uh, some clusters, and the cluster of words also shows us the topic. Yeah, because if we imagine what has been topic, topic is the combination of different terms and. Um, um, and phrases maybe, yeah. And uh, you, you can uh, explore how different topics uh, communicate each other. I mean, um, maybe the uh, topic of uh, sport, uh, why this, uh, this topic is so far from the topic of uh, CO technologies or from uh, marketing and etc. Or maybe you can see that uh, design topic is uh, very close to banking topic and it means that uh, in uh, based on this research yeah, um, these two spheres are um, has a lot of uh, connections yeah and you can find uh, some um, partners maybe in, in shared uh, topics too <clears throat> we can also uh, study from which uh, companies should we uh, invite speakers for our topic maybe if we would, we would like to create a new event and uh, we need some uh, organizations uh, and also to invite uh, some speakers yeah, real speakers so on the left side uh, this uh, graphic shows us um, the network of organizations yeah um, and the left side, uh, the network of speakers. Uh, on, on the other hand, we can uh, use the text mining to compare different uh, textual corpora. Um, in this study, we would like to compare um, demand side and supply side of imperial tourism uh, product uh, in St. Petersburg. So we collected uh, uh, different um, uh, descriptions of uh, tour products from tour agencies and compare these uh, texts uh, with uh, some reviews of people from TripAdvisor to find uh, um, the differences of uh, supply side and demand side. So here you can see uh, um, the, the most uh, significant words for supply side Yes, and the most significant uh, words for demand side and uh, some types of narratives yeah, for both of these two uh, groups. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, when we are talking about um, studying digital footprint, 
So we uh, should um, should not uh, forget about the creating. Yes. So using um, a digital footprint, we can also create online image in culture, and this is very important. Uh, and there are different levels of uh, these images. So it could be product level. Here you can see the dynamic of um, um, popularity of white nights. So in uh, Google, how often people search uh, white nights, and you can see that um, this is the uh, circle um, pattern because of white nights are from the May to August, and uh, you should uh, understand when these uh, um, um, these uh, needs of customers uh, starts. So when when they start searching uh, uh, white nights to start maybe uh, communicating with these people, so you can predict it. Uh, we can also talk about the destination level. So this is a study from uh, uh, one of um, uh, very interesting journals uh, and articles. So and uh, you can collect, for example, different uh, um, uh, posts from uh, um, Instagram or other social networks and uh, um, uh, analyze maybe the image the images uh, what people uh, maybe uh, photo in these uh, places and compare uh, these results with different uh, uh, destinations or you can compare uh, different organizations um, in this research my colleagues uh, this is our students from uh, our university they compare the reviews from the organizations, uh, hotels with four and five stars uh, with uh, uh, the reviews on two and three stars. And you can see that um, for um, the first group of, uh, uh, of uh, hotels, it is more um, uh, popular topics of event management, uh, style and decoration, pricing and values of money, sites etc so you can uh, for, for the managers of uh, such uh, hotels it is in, in this uh, information is so important because they can understand what uh, aspects of uh, their product they should um, maybe change or make uh, it better etc and also the user level we can also create a lot of networks of our friends of our maybe uh, communication. So very often these networks are so, so beautiful it is, you can see on this slide and we can analyze different uh, uh, centrality measures but to find the most popular people or the most um, um, influential people. Yeah, because uh, it, it depends on our uh, data. Yeah, and uh, finally, I uh, would like to show you uh, different uh, um, actual skills of modern uh, leaders and if you're going like mm -hmm. to give you a... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so I can continue here, uh, of course, to go deep into different research. Uh, you need to uh, have different kind of skills and firstly, uh, it is important to have ability to find and collect information. And uh, the second important point here is lifelong learning education. Uh, generally, I think that you are familiar with such concept, uh, but in few words, it means that you need to learn and to study during the whole your career, during the whole your life, because you know that very different skills can um, appear on different uh, period of time and we are not quite sure which uh, skills will be in demand in five years and you should be very prepared to learning to study uh, very new things and of course um, you need to understand different areas of business uh, it means uh, maybe it's connected with lifelong learning education because you need to be ready to work in a situation of uncertainty and to be ready to deal with very uh, new thing uh, during the whole your um, career 
and uh, you need to be able to use and understand big data. Uh, it's quite important because you need to understand your uh, consumer, your customer behavior and patterns. Uh, you can predict with the help of uh, data mining, text mining, ECNA, you can predict uh, consumer satisfaction, behavior, intention, and really it's very important because you can uh, build, you should build your strategy based on analysis of your client behavior, on your consumer behavior. Uh, the next very important skill is risk management and you need to be ready to deal with risks and with different type of crisis. Uh, I was starting with the statement that the modern uh, virus situation is kind of a uh, crisis and we need to be ready to work with it and we need to predict it. Uh, and um, of course, um, the last skills here is digital marketing. Uh, it's important to generate um, new content and to motivate people to generate this content by themselves about your product and about your organization. Uh, here we can move and I would like to say a few words about our uh, uh, favorite master program, arts and culture management, uh, the whole thing that uh, we were talked about during this lecture, we teach it uh, at our master program. Uh, we have a lot of courses, including digital marketing and text mining, and we uh, teach to analyze big data and uh, build uh, your business uh, based on this analysis. Uh, what else we can say about our master program that it kind of combination of history of art, but at the same time, it's combination uh, of very hard and soft skills at the same time. So uh, we have courses on uh, curating, on financing, on legal environment, et cetera, et cetera. And we implement a lot of teachers from foreign university and from, uh, from museums and different art institutions. Here you can see, for example, arts history course is conducted by um, professors from State Hermitage Museum of St. Petersburg and creating uh, it leads uh, by uh, vice director of Manesh. Uh, it's um, maybe one of the uh, most uh, famous and modern place of exhibition of modern art and of contemporary art. Uh, cultural and event management, you can see here at Kolkova, we have specialists from there and it's very vital. As well, we have uh, a uh, few professors from foreign institutions, including uh, Tartu University Estonia and the University of Western Australia. A uh, few words about partners of our program. As you understand, uh, we have a lot of uh, professors from real organizations of art and culture. But uh, the idea of our partnership is not only to get teachers, but to build a lot of projects and to build the education, the study process uh, based on projects. So our students take part in many, many uh, very practical projects together with different art institutions, for example, Russian Museum of Ethnography, and for the Frame Museum, State Capella, Museum of Street Art, or uh, organization connected to hotels and restaurants and uh, state hermitage museum, etc. And uh, we have very big international partner of our program. Uh, it's uh, Italian University, Milano University of Sacro Cuore, and we have joint course, and we have this professor at our program which conducts the course on uh, HR management. And uh, currently we hope uh, to implement the program of uh, double degree diploma. Currently we are in the process of it. 
So uh, here you have very short overview of our master program, and uh, we are ready to answer your a few questions if you have any. Thank you for your attention. We are ready to answer to your questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Yulia and Alexei. There are some questions in the chat. Maybe you can uh, you can look. Hold on a second, yeah, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. From the beginning, yes, we should start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good evening, good evening. House. Do you hear something about Clubhouse social network? It looks like the beginning of the new trend now. Mm, actually, I, I don't. Me too. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe maybe we will. I, I will check it. Yes, but you know, um, it is interesting that uh, different uh, platform starts uh, to be also popular uh, as Contact or uh, Facebook because of maybe some different uh, environment aspects. For example, I think uh, Telegram became so popular because of some rules in different countries and TikTok maybe because of um, the um, functions yes, uh, inside this. So I, I don't know this uh, platform, but maybe it's useful thing. Mm -hmm. can... uh, yeah, uh, it, it's something like uh, the beginning of the new trend we've heard, but uh, mm -hmm. it's something like only voice messages and you can create your room and you can invite people and there are a lot of uh, some kind of lectures uh, experts it professionals uh, they uh, started to use it uh, it's very it's very interesting trend mm -hmm. thank you very much yes really nowadays we have a lot of new trends and it's very interesting to follow this trend I can take the next question uh, on your master programs. Are you teaching how to work with data in arts and culture? Yes, of course. We are focused on it. And we, of course, we teach to understand arts and culture. Uh, we teach to manage it based on analysis of data, including big data. So it's mainly our focus. And the next question is uh, what types of career or industry are looking for experts in SNA? Uh, from my side, I can say that maybe it skill is vital for the whole industries now. Uh, I believe that all industries uh, need specialists which understand in big data, in analysis, uh, less or more. And anyway, even in arts and culture, it's important profession too. I believe that uh, overall we are preferring kind of analysis that in arts and culture. But as I said in the very beginning, which is very important, arts and culture, it's not only about museums and theaters. It's very wide circle of organization because of artification. It means that um, students after our program can work not only in theater and museums, but as well in many, many companies, for example, at position of creative director, analysis, etc. Because many companies, for example, luxury segment uh, tend to work with art and to put art in focus of their concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I can also mm -hmm. add a uh, very, I think, uh, amazing example is uh, the conference uh, Sunbelt. You can uh, Google it. This conference unites uh, people from different spheres. When I was uh, on this conference uh, last time, I meet with uh, uh, some economists, biologists, psychologists, sociologists, and such. So this is uh, there are a lot of uh, different tracks and sections, and you can uh, uh, listen how maybe um, uh, some animals. Uh, uh, communicate with each other based on social networking theory or how to analyze uh, uh, networks in uh, political science yes and this is also a very trend uh, topic uh, to analyzing blogosphere in political science so 
there are so much of people mm -hmm. with such skills. Mm -hmm. And the next question is about uh, interconnection of art and science. Thank you for your question. It's really very interesting. Uh, uh, what I'm thinking here, uh, we can talk about different types of interconnection of art and science. And uh, firstly, art helps to bridge, uh, to make science more popular, I would say, uh, more easy for understanding. Uh, maybe it's the first approach. The second approach on the level of phenomenology, maybe that art and science is not like two sides of one metal, but it's very the same thing. Uh, and it's very difficult to draw a line between art and science. It's kind of a uh, very closely connected phenomenon. Um, but generally, uh, what I'm thinking, science and art, um, as I said, the general uh, trend is that arts uh, nowadays uh, tend to be included in many, many spheres of our life. And uh, science is not kind of uh, exception here. So it's mm -hmm. my answer. Do you want to add something? Yeah, uh, I think um, uh, the question also consists of the uh, uh, how, how can you use science in context of maybe pandemic? And uh, we have uh, with our students, we have some um, uh, thesis uh, this year, uh, how uh, museums, maybe one of the topics, how museums can uh, adopt uh, their, um, their work in this context. And we used uh, different methods to analyze the factors which influence on um, um, revisit intentions of people right. here and uh, how they um, and, and the satisfaction uh, after visiting such uh, uh, places because uh, you know now uh, the products or um, of, of these museums of these organized cultural organizations uh, was changed uh, today you couldn't visit Hermitage Museum without uh, Mm, getting uh, the tour, yeah. You can uh, spend just two hours, not more, in Hermitage, and uh, you should go just uh, on one road. Yes, you couldn't go uh, any uh, in any ways, and you couldn't uh, stay uh, more than two hours. So this is uh, some rules for today, and uh, these uh, studies can um, help us to understand people's reaction, people's uh, thinking, because uh, from our point of view, um, after the pandemic, we hope that uh, it finished, uh, it, finished uh, it will finish in some period. So, and after um, opening or of all the doors of museums, people um, start, uh, will start uh, visiting these museums uh, and uh, maybe we, we will uh, find some over tourism and uh, we should uh, prepare our uh, resources of, uh, of museums before this uh, uh, wave. Yes, and um, I think these, these uh, studies are uh, published in different uh, scientific journals uh, with high ranked uh, uh, positions in Scopus or Web of Science and we use some um, theoretical concepts, yes, in this sphere. So I think that uh, the connection is uh, of art and science is, uh, um, is very good and uh, we can improve this connection on our um, studies. Mm -hmm. So do you have any more questions maybe? Because this was, I think, the last yes, mm -hmm. question. Any other questions from our students, from uh, professors? I know that uh, some of the professors also joined today. Mm -hmm. It seems like uh, no questions right now, but we uh, you can see in the chat the link to the program arts and culture management and if you will have any further questions you can 
contact our uh, speakers, our professors today. And um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Yulia and Alexey, for this interesting lecture. Uh, they knew a lot today about new trends in arts and in culture area. And thank you very much uh, to all our participants, to our students, professors, and staff at UCA. It's been our last lecture of the international school, but uh, we don't say goodbye. Our participants will get certificates very soon, and you will get further information on your email. Uh, I think that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much, and have a good weekend to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our meeting. Yes. Thank Ekaterina, you. thank you for moderating our lecture. <laughs> thank you. We will have a recording and I will send you uh, the recording of this lecture. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye.